at this stage we've got our database it's populated with a lot of data um, including temperatures and timestamps okay so we use the head and temp and timestamp and it goes on and on and on so we've got loads of data in there and indeed you could still be populating it live from another micro bit but this video is going to focus now on reading down that data to a PC you run in Python and using that same script to send that data out to another microbit. So this will com complete the loop. It'll be coming from one microbit through a computer onto the database, down to another computer and out to a second microbit. So this will really enable our remote control, so to speak, our remote data transfer. And hopefully in the next video, we'll give you an example or two that we've put up together that you can see um, the use of this kind of project. But for now, let's look at how we read the data down. So that is our database. And if I flip back to our code here, I've created a new file. Now you'll recognize a lot of this code. So we've got our libraries, obviously. We've still got our connection set up in the previous videos to the same database online. So nothing has changed there. And I've also added the serial port connection for our microbit. So my microbit is on COM13. And again, if you want to look at the first video, the technical setup, you'll see how to find your COM port or if you have any issues. I've got my while loop ready to go. I just need to add some code. And of course, I close the serial connection at the very end of the program. Now, before I get into the while loop, I'm going to create a couple of variables. Um, one is called the most recent key ID. I'm going to set it to zero and I'm also going to create the most recent timestamp. Now they're going to come into play very shortly, but for now I'll just leave them up there and initialize them as zero. Okay, so let's go straight ahead and pull down our results. Now in our Firebase database, what happens is we don't really request a single result of the last result. We don't really sort the database when it's online. Rather, we just have a single command that downloads all the contents of the database. And once it's on our machine, we can quickly sort it to find the latest temperature. So I've created this variable called my get results, and I'm going to equal to the connection. And instead of post, I'm going to type in get. So we're going to get our data. And again, we just need to define where we're getting it from. And if you remember right, we've put ours in the directory or branch called temperature. Um, and I don't need a second parameter right now. So that is going to gather all the data straight from the database and put it into my get results. Now, as you can imagine, that could be quite a lot of data. In fact, if I print that now, just so we can see, uh, my database has quite a few results, but not. it's not like I've been running it for ages. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so the connection is there and it's pulled down all the timestamps and all the data in that database. So now we just want to sort through that, find the latest temperature and send that to our microbit. So I'm just going to remove that code again and move on to the next part. So the next part is the loop that we're going to need to find the latest timestamp. So what I'm going to say is for the key ID in my get results, so that's going to loop around each entry in the results and each entry is going to refer, be referred to as key ID. And what we're going to do is we're going to check. So convert it to an integer. We're going to go into my get results. And we're going to go into the key ID term. And specifically, we're looking at the field called timestamp. Now, again, that needs to match the name of the field that you created in the database. So again, I'll just flick back to my database and show you that mine's was called timestamp, capital T, small s. So again, that's what we're looking at. We convert it to an integer and we compare it to the variable I created up here, which is most recent timestamp. And the idea here is that obviously the first entry it reads is definitely going to be greater than my timestamp because it's zero. So that should then, if we play our cards right, update our most recent timestamp to that timestamp. And we're going to just keep track. And each time we come across a more recent timestamp, we're going to update our variable that keeps track of it. So key ID. 
Again, this takes a little bit of examination to understand what's going on here. I can explain it briefly, but again, you will need to spend maybe a couple of minutes just going through it yourself. So we check the first entry is the timestamp greater than our timestamp and our timestamp is zero, so it probably is going to be. And if it is, it's going to take that new timestamp and replace our most recent. And it's going to keep that loop going until it actually comes across. It goes through every entry in the results. And by the end of it, we should have a record of the most recent timestamp and the most recent key ID to go with that timestamp. So I'm hoping that's clear enough because that's probably the most confusing thing in this code. That's what that's doing. And by the end of it, I should have in my two variables the latest data recorded. Okay, so we now have identified the most recent key ID, so the ID within that set. So what I want to do is I want to create a little variable here, microbit data, let's call it. Um, oops, microbit data, and I'm going to set that to convert to a string. My get results key ID timestamp or sorry temperature is what we're looking for not the timestamp so we found the most recent timestamp we're just taking out the appropriate temperature for that timestamp so we've got it in microbit data and that's what we're going to be sending to our microbit but before we do I'm going to check that it's returning a proper result so we're going to run this again Okay, so there we have it, 27 degrees, and it's just continually showing the latest result. So I'm just going to stop that. So that's perfect. It's given us our temperature that we want to send. So let's actually send it. So actually, I'll leave that print. It's no harm us seeing it on the computer. So serial.write. Now we're making use of our serial connection. And we're going to send microbit data, but we're going to encode it. Now, encoding basically means that there are a set of protocols for this type of communication. And to be honest with you, we don't really need to know the ins and outs of how these protocols are defined and how they work. Um, we just need to know what encoding to use. Okay, so we're using UTF-8 and we're putting in an end line between each um, temperature that we send, just so the microbit has an easier time reading it. So again, I wouldn't worry too much about the detail of that line. Just understand that we are writing to the serial port the microbit data variable, and we're going to encode it with a little bit of extra information. And once we send it out, again, we don't want to overwhelm the microbit, so we're going to just sleep for five seconds to give it time to scroll maybe the temperature across the connection. And then we've got serial.close. Now, hopefully this is going to work, but before any of that can work, we need to put a little bit of code onto our new microbit that is going to wait data from its serial connection. So I have that already created. And just to go through it with you, it's very simple. We set up our serial connection as before. So again, it's over USB and we make sure our baud rate matches. And then we wait for data to be received on the serial until we hear a new line is being sent. So we're looking for that backslash N command. Once that is done, we know we've read a line and we're going to set a variable incoming data to that data and we're just going to show it on the screen. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to see it. You'll just have to take my word for it that it's been shown on my microbit screen. But let's run it and see if we get any errors first. So we're going to run my program. It's reading from the database, 27 degrees. I'm looking at my microbit and hopefully 27 is going to scroll across it. And indeed, it is scrolling across it. So my microbit is now displaying 27 degrees across its screen, and we know that the code is working. So we've kind of completed the entire project cycle now, but hopefully in the next video, I'm going to show you a couple of examples that I've coded up without going into too much detail of how you could use this code to run different applications or different projects in your class.